everyone, my name is Oishiki. At first I would like to say that please kindly subscribe my channel. So today I am going to read a story on the topic The Postmaster from this book. So let's begin with our story. The Postmaster The Postmaster first took up his duties in a village of Ulapur. Though the village was a small one, there was an indigo factory nearby and the proprietor, an Englishman, had managed to get a post office established. Our postmaster belonged to Calcutta. He fell like a fish out of water in this remote village. His office and living room were in a dark, thatched shed not far from green slimy ponds surrounded on all sides by dense growth. The man employed in the indigo factory had no leisures. Moreover, they were hardly disabled companion of decent flock. Nor is a Calcutta boy an adept in the art of associating with others. Among strangers, he appears either proud or ill, at ease. At any rate, the postman had but little company, nor had he much to do. All times he tried his hand at writing a verse or two. That the movement of the leaves and clouds of the sky were enough to fill life with joy. Such were the settlements to which he sought to give explanations, but God knows that the poor fellow would have felt it as a gift of a new life if some genie of Arabian nights had in one night swept away the trees, clouds, leaves and all and repaid them the macamedous road, hiding the clouds from the view with rows of tall houses. The postmaster's salary was small. He had to cook his own meals, which he used to share with Ratan, an orphan girl of the village who did odd jobs for him. When the evening the smoke began to curl up from the village cow sheds and the curlers gripped in each bush, when the merchants of the brawl select sang their shrill song in their daily meeting place, when any poet who had attempted to watch the movement of the leaves in the dense bamboo tickets would have felt a ghosty shiver ran down his back. The postmaster would light his lamp and call out, Ratan! Ratan would sit outside waiting for this call instead of coming in at once, would reply, Did you call me, sir? What are you doing? The postmaster would ask. I must be going to light the kitchen fire, would be the answer. And the postmaster would say, Oh, let the kitchen fire be for a while. Light me my pipe first. At last, Ratan would enter with a puff filled out cheeks, vigorously blowing into a flame, a live coal to light the tobacco. The word gives the postman an opportunity of conversation. Well, Ratan, perhaps he would begin, do you remember anything of your mother? That was a fertile subject. Ratal partly remembered and partly didn't. Her father had been founded of her that her mother him had recollected more validity. He used to come home in the evening after his work and one or two of the evenings stood out more clearly than others. Like pictures in her memory, Ratan would sit on the floor near the postmaster's feet as the memories crowd in upon her. She called to mind a little brother that she had and how on some bygone cloudy day she had played at fishing with him at the edge of the pond with a twink of make-behave fishing rod. 
Such little incidents would drive out greater events from her mind. Thus, as they talked, it would often get very late and the postmaster would feel too lazy to do any cooking at all. Ratan would then hastily light the fire and toast some unleaved bread, which with the cold remnants of the morning meal was enough for their suppler. On some evening settled at his desk in the corner of a big empty shed, the postmaster too would call up memories to his own home of his mother and his sister. Of those at the exceed his hurt was sad, memories which were always hunting him, but which he could not talk about was the man of the factory, though he found himself naturally recalling him aloud in the presence of a simple little girl. And also, so it came about the girl who altitude to his people as mother, brother and sister as if she has known them all her life. In fact, she had a complete picture in each one of them painted in her little heart. One noon during a break in the rains, there was a cool soft breeze blowing the smell of a damp grass and leaves. In the hot sun fell like the warmth beneath of the tired earth on one's body. A persistent bird went on all the afternoon, repeating the blunder of it one coming in nature's audience chamber. The postmaster had nothing to do. The shimmer of the fleshly washed leaves and the blanked up remains of the retreating rain clouds were sights to see, and the postmaster was watching them and thinking of himself. Oh, if only some kind soul were near just one loving human being whom I could hold near my heart. This was exactly, he went on thinking, what that the bird was trying to say and it was the same feeling which murmuring leaves were shivering to express. But... No one knows or would know that such an idea might also take processions of ill-paid village postmaster in the deep, silent midday interval of his work. The postmaster sighed and called out, Ratan! Ratan was then sprawling beneath the guava tree. Busily engaged in eating unripe guavas. At the voice of her master, she ran breathlessly, saying, Well, where are you calling me, Dada? I was thinking, said the postmaster, of teaching you to read. And then for the rest of the afternoon, he taught her the alphabets. Thus, in a very short time, Ratan had gone as far as the double consonants. It seemed as though the showers of season would ever end. Canals, ditches and hollows were overflowing with water. Day and night and the patter of rains were heard and the crooking of frogs. The village roads were becoming impassable and marketing had to be done in plunts. One Heavy cloud morning, the postmaster's little pupil had been long waiting outside the door for her call, but not hearing it as usual, she took up her dog, earned book, and slowly entered the room. She found her master stretched out on his bed and thinking he was resting. She was about to retire on tip-top when she suddenly heard her name, Ratan. She turned at once and asked, Where are you sleeping, Dada? The postmaster in painted voice said, I am not well. Feel my head. Is it very hot? 
So our story ends here. In my next video, I am going to read Postmaster Part 2. If you liked my today's video, then please like and comment my video. And also subscribe my channel to listen to more such stories and follow all my videos regularly. And don't forget to click on the bell icon. Thank you.